again, going back to the research on serial murders, uh, this is uh, one of, I talked about personality disorders, obsessive compulsive personality disorder and, and, and traits thereof uh, have been found. And it's believed that uh, uh, those traits of perfectionism, orderliness, uh, ability to be deliberate and planful actually make them uh, better serial murderers and are uh, they're able to uh, essentially cover their tracks better so that they're able to operate for longer periods of time and therefore have more victims. Dr. Noah, I'd like to direct your attention to page 27 of your report, please. Yes. And is this the part of your report where you begin to express some opinions? Yes, it is. And with regard to the very first opinion, does it deal with uh, Dr. Woods' conclusion that Mr. Sowell was unable to perform his conduct to the requirements of the law? Yes. And what is your opinion with regard to that conclusion? Well, it's my, my opinion with reasonable medical certainty that uh, Dr. Woods fails to support with reliable bases his conclusion that Mr. Sowell was unable to conform uh, his conduct to the requirements of the law. Okay. Did you, in terms of volitional control, that's what we're talking about here. Yes. Uh, well, is that what we're talking about here? Well, Dr. Wood's conclusion that the defendant lacked the capacity to perform his conduct to the requirement of the law? It's, straight, it's straight after, out of uh, Dr. Wood's report. All right. And uh, in making assessments about someone's ability to refrain from uh, the ability to refrain from Performing their uh, behavior to the requirements of the law, do does forensic behavior science look at things before and after the offense? Absolutely. And did you note that in your report? I did. Explain, please. Well, firstly, I, I noted that there was an absence of considering the factual data before and after the offense in Dr. Wood's report, which is why. I, had, I was forced to conclude that uh, the conclusion, his conclusion was unreliable. When I uh, interviewed, uh, or rather reviewed his report and also reviewed the crime scene photos uh, and all of the investigative reports related to this case, what I found was uh, uh, a pattern that strongly suggests very deliberate, purposeful, planful actions as opposed to loss of volitional control or irresistible impulse. And what did that consist of? Well, at this point, uh, one really has to consider very carefully the behavioral evidence from the crimes themselves. And as unpleasant as it sometimes can be, one has to put oneself inside the mind of the offender. And so when one does that, one sees that he had to have had the ability to interact interpersonally, speak with with ease, set at ease the individuals, and in some way get them to come into his house with them. That in and itself takes some amount of interpersonal skill, cognitive functioning, uh, and uh, uh, mental wherewithal. Then, once he's been able to get them to come into his house with them, at some point, uh, he flips the switch. And then has to take measures to bind and restrain them. This isn't something uh, that uh, uh, can be done haphazardly. One has to know where the binding is, uh, has to have it 
readily available, uh, has to use it in the appropriate fashion, make sure it's tight and so that the person can't get out of it, binding and restraining in various ways, either their wrists or their ankles, and sometimes a gag around the mouth. After that's accomplished, after that's accomplished, then at some point uh, there is the raping uh, and the choking. Now, the autopsy uh, reports show that virtually all of the victims were either ligature strangled or choked. And in many of the cases, the victims were found still with the ligature around their neck and, and with bindings, which suggests strongly to me that these bindings were done uh, post-mortem, that is, before the person was dead. Otherwise, why would you bind a dead victim? So to be able to bind the and then choke them and strangle them as they're, fi as they're attempting to fight for their life, uh, this takes some purposeful, deliberate action to control them. Okay? Then there's the raping, and then after the death, at some point, one has to wrap the bodies and conceal them in plastic. But where is the plastic going to come from? It needs to be readily available. It needs to be bought, purchased, moved, stored, used in the appropriate way, wrapped up. After it's wrapped up, then it's still not good enough. It needs to be duct taped to make sure that the, it's a tight package for easy disposal. All of this requires intact attention, concentration, memory, ability to plan, ability to organize. Otherwise, these are, these, are, these are complex actions over a period of time. Otherwise, it simply wouldn't happen. Then there were other actions suggesting carrying loads of dirt uh, up to conceal bodies, either uh, in the crawl space or in the basement. This, again, takes effortful planning, memory, concentration, uh, uh, deliberation. Then, skipping ahead forward, at some point, uh, graves had to be dug in the backyard. This will take planning, concentration, deliberation. Uh, I, it, it, it's, well, my guess is that we'll never know at what point, whether it was daytime or nighttime, that the graves were dug. Uh, but uh, regardless, the graves were dug. And, but then the bodies that were wrapped in plastic and had duct tape around them, at some point, those had to be transported out of the house and into the grave, into the graves. Highly unlikely, I, I admit that I don't know, but highly unlikely that this was done in broad daylight. Highly unlikely that this was done in broad daylight. Why? Because it would be spotted. So more than likely this was done over the, under the cover darkness. Remember that uh, when Ms. Morris escaped, this was in broad daylight uh, and, and was spotted on the ground, there were readily many people there to spot and uh, see her. So this would have had to have been done most likely under the cover of night. Objection. The body, I think you're going a little bit too 